Hello, this is Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. And today we are making concrete dumbbells. I've made concrete weight plates in the past. You guys have seen the video. Uh, I personally like purchasing stuff. Back in the day, I did a lot of DIY stuff though. In fact, my whole gym back in the day was pretty much all DIY stuff. Now that I've gotten older, I don't do as much DIY stuff for myself, but I recognize a lot of part of the home gym community does. And I think it's like, that's like what the garage gym is all about is like just making stuff so you can use it. Right now it's hard to find dumbbells in general, so why not make them? So I reached out to my buddies at Sticks and Stone who they make the concrete mold for the plates. They also have one now for dumbbells. You guys can click the link below the like button if you'd like to buy your own. However, what I would say is you can do this without these. This is gonna be helpful, but you can follow all these instructions, making your own form in some sort, or you could use like a small bucket to do it as you would with this. This is just gonna make it a little bit nicer. So take that with a grain of salt. If you'd like a nicer version, go ahead and buy them. If not, just do it on your own, follow these instructions. So I've got the instructions right here and where we're going, we don't need instructions because we're men and we don't ask anybody for help. We do it ourselves. And that's what we're going to do today. Hopefully, I hope I don't have to, you know, actually check those out here in a moment. So we're going to take these, we're going to mix up some concrete. There's some different techniques and things that I learned based upon the last time we made concrete weight plates that I'm going to apply here. And after talking to this guy who does this for a living, making these things. So let's get into it. First, let's talk about the supplies. One, you're going to need a big ass bag of concrete. Okay. You don't need I mean, these are really designed not to go above probably 25 pounds a head, so 50 pound total dumbbell. I don't think you can fit a, make a 100 pound dumbbell out of these. Uh, it would feel very awkward and have to be really big. There is a way that you can make this heavier by adding lead shot and that sort of stuff, just like you do with Atlas stones. But for our purposes, we're gonna make a 50 pound dumbbell. So we're gonna be using a concrete mix, higher strength, the longer it's gonna last. I wouldn't suggest dropping these, but if you do, you want a higher strength concrete. Number two is you're gonna need some sort of iron rod. These, all this stuff is from Home Depot or Lowe's, whichever one you like, except Home Depot is definitely better because it's orange. But this one is 18 inches and three quarter inch inside diameter. The reason I did that is because it fits inside the little nipple that's on this bad boy. And uh, yes, I said just said nipple. And you place this in here, use silicon to tie it in there. So we've got those. As you can see, this isn't because I'm some sort of horror character or something and I'm gonna kill somebody. This is so we're providing extra contact area for the concrete to attach to. Just like an old school bumper plate or regular bumper plate where they add extra metal on the inside to contact the rubber. Beautiful. Over here, we have some tie wire. This is just, a, again, like you would add rebar or mesh to traditional concrete. This is gonna make it stronger. I think you wanna make these as strong as possible if you plan on using them in any sort of fashion in your gym because you are going to drop them in some manner, whether that's high up or low up. So make sure you have something that make them stronger. So tie wire or rebar is gonna help. We have some silicone spray. We're silicone spray. We're gonna spray this inside first, and this is just gonna make it come out easier. Just like we did, we sprayed the uh, cast iron weight plate whenever we made the cornbread. Same exact model, except this is concrete. Gosh, we do some weird stuff around here. Okay, and then we have this silicone, which is a little bit higher strength, and we're gonna put this inside to hold this. Without further ado, let's get into it. Step number one, we are going to make our concrete mix here, okay? Like I said, we got some high strength concrete. I've got my water pitcher here. We already put the concrete mix in here because we don't want to get dusty in the old garage gym. And then I've obviously, this is the nicest water pitcher you ever see used for concrete. This is a Vitamix pitcher, but that's all I had inside. So, sorry wifey. So I'm gonna mix this in here. I'm gonna add a little bit. I honestly think we may need a little bit more water than that. But thankfully, because these heads are so little, it's not like we gotta do a whole bucket's worth of concrete. It's not gonna be that bad. Eventually. What we're looking for is a nice soupy mix. I think I actually put the perfect amount of water in there. The first time, I'm getting better at this. Later that same evening. Oh yeah. Who needs a concrete mixture when you got buns of steel? That's perfect. Okay. This is about the mixture level you want. Nice soupy, not too watery, not too grainy. 
this is what I'm looking for. Okay. So I learned my lesson last time in that I didn't really use a scale to tell how much I was gonna put on here. The difficult part with this stuff is although you can measure it out, because it's concrete and it's using water, the water evaporates and it gets to a lower amount. So weight plates, for instance, if I wanted 45 pounds, you really wanna put in about 49 pounds worth of concrete and water before it dries. So I'm saying, because we want a 50 pound dumbbell, that means each head is gonna be around 24 pounds or so, because this is gonna be a pound or two. So really, I'm probably thinking we're gonna to have to fill this all the way to the top, and it's probably gonna be about 26 pounds, 25 pounds, somewhere around there, and then it'll dry down to a lower weight. So the way I'm gonna do that is I got my handy dandy shipping scale here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zero out the scale before we put this in. But before I get that all dialed in and everything, I wanna make sure I've got some of my stuff prepared ahead of time. We've got this tie wire, like I said, you could use rebar or you could use some sort of mesh. This would probably be the easiest, most economical way to do it. Um, so that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna just make two or three of these to put in here. And the way that's gonna work is I'm gonna put some concrete in, then I'm gonna put this in, I'm gonna put more concrete and just kind of do it in layers. So let me cut these and form them real quick. Tie them like this, just super simple. And that's gonna wrap in there. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. You love to see it, you love to see it. And it doesn't get much better than that, folks. Okay, we got three of those. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zero on my scale. So here we are here. We are at zero for the weight. I'm now going to spray this. And this is, like I said, this is basically your cooking spray. This is gonna help you release the cavity as quickly as possible and keep it not very dirty afterwards because this is the thing, if you're gonna make a full set of this, one, it's gonna take you a while, and two, you don't wanna have to be spending extra time cleaning this with alcohol. So do this. After we do this, for the next round, we'll wanna use alcohol, but we're gonna use one side, then do the other. Um, yeah, just make it a little bit easier on ourselves. So here we go. Spray this bad boy in here, all around. Okay, I learned my lesson last time. You don't need a ton, you just wanna make sure it's an even coat. I'm gonna put some on the outside edges there just cause for extra measure, cause I'm cool like that. Cause I'm cool like that. Yeah, I'm cool like that, I'm cool like that. I don't know if that song how, how it goes, but. Okay, now comes the magic. Time to put the concrete in. We're gonna pour in, actually, I don't wanna pour this in. I, I did learn this last, last time. I wish I had gloves, but my calluses should hold. I'm just gonna take a little bit here, put it on top. And really the reason I'm doing this is because I want the soupier, the watery mix on top to be on the bottom because that's gonna make a more even finish. And we want a really clean finish because then we're gonna color that with some paint and we want the logo to show and everything just because it's gonna look kind of cool. So that's why I'm doing it like this. Tamping that bad boy down. Ooh, just making it look nice and pretty. Okay, that's there. I'm gonna put a little bit more in here before I put my first wire tie. I'm gonna put my wire tie in. As you can see, I'm pressing that in there. So it's nice in there. Then just gonna fill it up with more concrete. Feel okay pouring it now. We're at right around 10 pounds, what we're looking at here. Okay. I'm gonna let that kind of settle a little bit and put my other wire tie in there like that. Okay. Pour some more. Like I said, this is probably gonna fill the whole thing. And it's it's looking like that, it's looking like so. I don't even know if I have enough concrete to be honest. We're gonna be, we're gonna be, yeah, I don't think we're gonna, we'll be close. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Put that in there like that. So we may be making less than a 50 pound cut dumbbell. We'll see, ooh, nice and soupy, looking pretty. Looking right, looking tight. Get all that goodness out of there. OK, 
Okay. Get that all flat. And we're looking at 22. Yeah, this is gonna be a little bit less than 50. Probably gonna be around 45 pound dumbbell or so. Um, but that's okay. It's gonna be close enough. So I'm putting my last wire tie in here, set it in there just below the surface. There we go, patting that down. Now I'm gonna go wash my hand real quick. Um, actually, one thing I did forget to do is you wanna get the bubbles out. So there's different ways to do that. The easiest way is just to knock. Honestly, what I should have done, and I'll do this next time, you guys are watching the videos, so you'll be able to learn from my mistake, is you wanna get as many bubbles out there as possible. So as I'm knocking this, I'm seeing all sorts of bubbles come to the top. What I should have done, if I was smarter, is I would have knocked the bubbles out in layers. So as I did, I kinda of did three different layers there, like a cake, seven layer dip, except a three layer concrete dumbbell, and you'd wanna knock out the bubbles as it happened. So I'm just gonna do that right now. I'm seeing some bubbles come to the surface. All that's gonna do is that's gonna prevent gaps from forming in the surface and just make it harder, tighter, um, more durable concrete. Ooh, a little shimmy's working too. Hey ho, what you know about that shimmy? Shimmy, oh, you can just see the bubbles coming to the top. How you doing, Bubbles? Good to see you, boys. There we go. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, this is our three quarter inch pipe, 18 inches. We are going to set this down in the middle. I'm then gonna take some duct tape. The way that we've done this in the past is we've used silicone to like glue it to the weight plate form. This way is a little bit different. So we're gonna stick this in here in the middle. I'm then gonna tape it to the outside of the form and that's gonna try and keep it as rigid and centered as possible. Honestly, if you wanna do this really well and you wanna make sure it's straight, you can get a level, but I think that's probably a little overkill. So I'm just gonna set this in here like this. See if I can find that nipple, which I can, because I'm really good at finding nipples. And there we go. Okay. Then I'm gonna take my duct tape here. Okay, so that should hold it enough. You're really just trying to make sure that it stays upright. Um, the more stable you can make it, the better. So if you've got a different method you wanna use, feel free. This is the one recommended to me. And honestly, this doesn't seem like ideal, and I may be doing this not perfectly, but this is gonna be enough. I th It'll be enough to keep it still. Beautiful. Okay, our first side is done. It's pretty much that simple. We're gonna come back. This is the problem with dumbbells. You gotta do both sides, and you, can't, you gotta do them separately, because this can't be, it's gotta be done before we flip it the other way. Uh, so we'll come back here in about 24 hours, 48 hours, and do the other side. Three days later. Okay, welcome back. We are three days later here, and we're gonna do the other side of this dumbbell. Just so you know, one thing I realized, you really only need one of these. It's nice to have the second one, but you could easily just pop this off and put it on the other side. I'm gonna wait though, because I wanna pop these off so we can see them all together, because I think it'll just be like a cool reveal for the whole thing. So we'll do that in a little bit. But right now what I'm gonna do as I'm gonna do the same process, the only difference is it's gonna be more difficult to basically have this thing hanging upside down on here. Obviously, duct tape's not gonna work. We made these wood pieces out of pallet wood, actually a piece of equipment that was sent on it, so <laughs> reduce, reuse, recycle, right? And so we're gonna put these basically on here, one side six and a half inches, one side seven inches, and it uh, should give us a good idea on just keeping it upright. So let's mix the concrete and just redo this thing Roll that beautiful B-roll for you. Okay, we got our concrete poured, we got it mixed, everything's good to go. We are now going to take this side, put it on, flip it upside down, and put it in onto the nipple. This is, uh, this will be interesting. I haven't done this part yet. I think this will be the most difficult part, but if we if those are sized right, this should hold well. So we're gonna put this bad boy in here. 
As my uh, awesome videographer just reminded me, we wanna make, the, make sure the octagons line up. This is another point. On this particular mold, there are sections for the weight and the logo. So knowing that ahead of time would definitely be helpful. I'm gonna look under here and see if I can feel it. So that's the D and the A's on that one. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do opposites for this one and do it like that. So that way, no matter where it's kind of located on the rack, you'll be able to see it fine. Okay, what I'm gonna do is take these, position them, one there, and then one on this side. And these bad boys, whoo! Great job, Sam. Sam's the one who cut these. These are perfect. Uh, you really wanna make sure this is even, especially with a heavier bell. We're, this one's gonna be like 45 pounds or so. So making sure that this bad boy is straight and even, if you got one of these things cockeyed, that would be kind of unfortunate. Uh, you would notice every time, trust me. Um, which is, you know, one of the downsides of DIY and probably why this guy made weight plates first, because this is a little bit more difficult process. But I think if we get it, uh, it went pretty sweet. So I feel like that's pretty well lined up on there. Just for some extra help here, I'm gonna take a look and see what this looks like. So we're off a little bit on that side. So if I maybe bring this over a little bit. That's closer. That's pretty close. It's gonna be very hard to get this perfect, but you know, it's not, it's definitely worth trying to get it at least somewhat close. I think that's good for today, folks. We'll be back a couple days, pull it out of the mold, look at all its beautifulness, and then repeat the process for another dumbbell. This is, this is lengthy. But if you want gains, you gotta make sacrifice. No gain without pain. All right, see you in a little bit. We are back. It's been about three days since we did the top half. Um, this will be the first unveiling both for you and for me. I haven't seen it yet. I'm really looking forward to see it because this is really the best part. You unveil it. It's like baking a cake. You pull it out of the, uh, the old cake pan. And it's just beautiful. I'm hoping that's how this is. I hope it doesn't turn out like the old cornbread and the weight plate cake. So let's find her out. First off, I'm gonna take off all this tape. As you remember, this tape and these wood pieces were here basically just to keep this structure up. These, I mean, this is a big, this is a big dumbbell. That thing was concrete. Honestly, if you're really gonna use these, I'd probably suggest getting some like steel shot or something like that to put into the concrete to make them more compact yet heavier. Because if you're just using concrete like I am, um, it's just gonna have to be big if you're doing heavy. I mean, this one's probably gonna be around 45 pounds and that's a big dumbbell for 45 pounds. Okay, I don't wanna break these. Honestly, we're gonna want these to cure for a few more days once I take them out of here, but I think it's been about good for now. The key really for taking these out, supposedly, is to get some air in the side of it. Once you get some air in the side of it, you should be able to create a cavity and then pop it out. Man. I'm just kind of nervous to do anything that would break it. Oh, are you ready? The most satisfying part. Three, two, one. Oh, that wasn't me. So nice. Look how smooth that is. Ah, I just want to touch it. That's what she says. Whew. All right, let's get this other one out and we'll weigh them. This is not easy. And I used a ton of silicone spray, so make sure you use a lot as well. Okay, here's the other one. In all her beautiness and glory, <laughs> Woo! Yay! Woo! That thing is sick. 
Look at it. I didn't obviously get all the air bubbles out. Oh man. And they're opposites too, which I did on purpose. Look at that. So the logo here, flip around, logo's on the opposite side, just like most dumbbells. That way, whenever, wherever it is on the rack, it can look good. This is a comically large dumbbell though. I can already tell. I wish I would have made the handle shorter. I mean, that thing is massive, but <laughs> look like freaking Fred Flintstone. Okay, now let's weigh it. We got our beautiful scale here. It's weighed millions of dollars worth of plates. Okay, I don't know how much this is gonna weigh. I'm guessing around 40, 45. So let's see what the damage is. 46.9. I was shooting for about 45, so I'm glad it's over. And that is, you know, that's more than you really want with a dumbbell, but that's not bad. That just means I gotta get this next one pretty close too. Um, I can tell that this handle's not perfectly like centered or perfectly even, but I think overall for most use cases, this is a dang good concrete dumbbell. It's the best concrete dumbbell I've ever made. <laughs> okay, so now we have to repeat the process, make a whole nother one, then we're gonna drop test it, we're gonna lift with it, and then we'll let you know if we recommend making these. Let's do it. We're back with dumbbell number dose, and we are done, baby. So we're gonna take this bad boy out. This is honestly the best part of the process, is seeing the fruits of your labor, right? It's been about probably a week since we've like done our last video, putting these things in here. Uh, I've been waiting for them, but it's super cold, so it takes longer to uh, basically cure. So I'm excited to see what we got here. Take these pieces off, these pieces. Okay, get this first one out here. This is the hardest part, honestly. You just gotta get some air in there. And then you can, oh yeah, oh, you can hear it kind of like a fart. Okay, are you ready? Let's see how this bad boy looks. There we go, baby. Oh, seriously, I don't know if there's anything more satisfying. There's nothing more satisfying, not even sex. I mean, this is, whew, okay. I'm married, by the way, so I can talk about that. Okay. Now we got to do this other side. This side is going to be a bit unique in that my uh, production manager decided to use, what was it? Ty black dye in this head of the dumbbell for tie-dye purposes. So we'll see if it looks, see how it looks. <laughs> Maybe cool. It may look stupid. Ah, it looks just like darker. I don't, honestly, you can't really even tell. I bet once it dries out, it'll be fine. This is the last one we did. Wow. These things just look, oh my gosh. I mean, is there anything cooler than me? Maybe these. My gosh, dude. Oh. Oh, I just feel just incredibly strong. Okay, there is one last thing, well, a couple last steps, but the main last step I wanna do, and that is, you guys thought we were gonna leave this three quarter pipe flat, smooth? No, we knurl everything, including the device we use to knurl the knurling. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna knurl this bad boy. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna do a, basically a curly cue wrap it all the way around going one way, and then we're gonna go the opposite way. So it's gonna be crosshatch. It's not gonna be volcano, but it's gonna be better than nothing, and it's gonna look sick. Let's get into it. 2,000 years later. All right, guys, we finished the knurling. As you can see, it's absolutely incredible. I did this by hand. Volcano knurl, beautiful. Just kidding. But for real, check out this knurl. Incredible. Now we gotta train. All right, so we have built these together. We've lifted with them, we've knurled them, we've done everything you can think of. But here in Garage Gym Reviews, that's not enough. No, for you folks, 
we have to do a drop test. It's just something we've got to do. So I got my handy dandy thug rug here. Um, I really don't want to break these because these are going to be like a memento. I'll like set them on a shelf and just look at them, you know, <laughs> because I probably won't use them because we got the other dumbbells. But I have to show you how strong they are because I think they're going to be stronger than I think. So I'm not going to like throw these up in the air like we normally do with a commercial product, but I want to give you an idea on their durability and I kind of want to see if they're going to last. So I'm just going to do, let's just start with the standard, just drop from here. Okay, we're good. Man, I don't want them to fall off and hit the concrete. All right, we're good. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> The issue is going to come when it hits the concrete. All right. We're good. Good. All right. As you can see, as long as these are hitting a rubber mat, you're pretty good. The issue that's going to happen is this head's going to detach from this handle. Um, over time, that could happen. Currently, even after those drops, it feels great. So the reason I'm testing that is basically if I was on a bench or something or incline bench and I suddenly like lost it or whatever, I had to drop it. That's really the only thing you want to do. And these like will probably last longer than some adjustable dumbbells out there. Okay. We've been able to make and train with the concrete dumbbells. Is this something I would suggest most people make? Uh, maybe, I mean, if this is like really you're low on funds or you can't find them and you really want to train. The issue is they are so wide for what they are. Like they literally look like Flintstone dumbbells and they feel like it, but they're a lot lighter than I think you'd assume. You can make them heavier by maybe adding some iron rebar and things to make them heavier. Uh, but to make a full set, I mean, these are like 50 pounds. They're not that heavy. So a hundred pounder, like double the size would be just massive. So, something to be considered of. However, I think they're pretty cool. If you'd like to see the mold, check out the link below the like button. However, you could make them with, you know, painter's buckets or something like that. This has been Coop from Garage and Reviews. We'll see you next time. Peace.